Hello everyone, my name is Tatiana Shavrina and I am the team leader of the AGI NLP team at Sberbank. Uh, today uh, I will present our project, the Digital Manager, which is uh, somehow AGI based uh, and is an AGI based assistant for the managers actually. So, uh, Banking itself uh, opens a wide range of uh, possibilities for automation uh, with machine learning, with deep learning, uh, and so on. And at Sberbank, we are running like a company of 300,000 employees, maybe more by now. Uh, and that gives all the data scientists working uh, at the bank uh, a great field for experiments and for expertise. So. Uh, and if some simple actions uh, could be automated like uh, uh, with machine learning, like consider that already done uh, at Sberbank. Uh, so there are more high level tasks which remain unautomated. And by now uh, there is a great uh, uh, industrial demand uh, for high level automation. Uh, for example, like by now we have a fully automated uh, credit decision-making process with no human interaction in the middle. Uh, and automating routine, uh, even with uh, some simple decisions, uh, provide everyone a possibility to develop their best personal skills, take some new initiatives, etc. So is, uh, as there is some strong demand of AGI to happen, uh, we want to make some simple decision-making processing uh, with our models, with our NLP team, uh, and make some digital assistance, uh, which would help managers, that would help the lead leaders, the team leaders, to uh, make better decisions. Uh, this is how the digital manager project has started. And by our internal study, about 70% of all the time uh, of the managers uh, in Sberbank is spent on routine operations, uh, which are routine, like routine cognitive operations, such as email checking, creating reports after the meetings, etc. And I suppose that number is quite impressive uh, and can affect the businesses and the goals. And what if we created a personal assistant that could offer automated solution for these boring emails, for personal calendar, for some repetitive decisions? Uh, so our goal is to automate at least 50% of the decisions which are made on the level of middle management. Uh, so our uh, machine learning team started gathering all the data that we needed for that kind of project. And we are starting with the text data, of course. Uh, so uh, by now it seems like texts are the best source uh, to start with uh, because all the information we actually needed uh, is expressed and can be found somehow in the text data. Like there is a pure knowledge uh, uh, expressed in the knowledge basis, uh, in the uh, documentation like JIRA and Confluence. Uh, and also there are traces of the decision-making itself like uh, the emails, uh, social media, chats, etc. So NLP helps us to go from a lower level to building maybe a high level system with priorities uh, for the managers. So let us dive in uh, and see what, of course, we have started with some emotional state tracking on the emails to explore which factors uh, affect on the decision process. And uh, we have, of course, emotional uh, state managing with sentiment models, but also we are like the admirers of uh, Allen NLP uh, models. And we have adapted the events to mind model for Russian, which is uh, uh, an open domain generation model, which uh, is, uh, uh, generating intents uh, uh, on, and it works uh, super well. Like it works super well on the emails actually. So if you like cluster all your employees or uh, all the emails, you will 
see with the intents which are extracted at uh, all about documentation. This person is coding, this person is uh, gathering uh, all the money for the birthdays, etc. So it's it works uh, like about uh, uh, like an open domain model, it, it works uh, excessively well. And of course, we have like classifiers of politeness and uh, enforcement. Uh, if there are some requests in the emails, who sends these requests, uh, who is more polite than the others, uh, etc. And also we have some models which are based on Russian superglue benchmark also, like there is a common uh, task uh, uh, in the NLU uh, benchmarks. Uh, I suppose that's the Winograd schema for English. Yeah, uh, and uh, on the Winograd schema, we have a classifier of uh, the proposals, which contains some uh, uh, illogical things that cannot happen. So we have a classifiers like that that work on the email data to prevent some uh, where the initiatives. Uh, and also another model which is working also on the uh, natural language understanding uh, uh, corpora uh, is uh, the model uh, which provides us uh, a possibility to make a better choice. So there is a data set called uh, choice of plausible alternatives uh, COPPA in English and we have adapted it successfully for Russian and there is a model uh, uh, which works quite well on the uh, limited set of decisions provided in COPPA, uh, but also we have retrained it uh, using the knowledge uh, expressed in additional resources. We have crawled the stack exchange data for English and Russian uh, and the th thematics of IT and product managing and project managing and have uh, retrained the model to rearrange the best answers so that uh, it could always uh, choose uh, the best alternative. Uh, and that also works uh, quite well within the IT department in our models, like in the emails that works quite well. Uh, it really does rearrange the alternatives like in some better way. Uh, and also there is a classifier which uh, helps to delegate the tasks which are stated in the text. So. Uh, by now it works like 75% uh, F1 score, so not quite impressive, but still uh, if uh, you add some more people like uh, top three or top five people uh, by the classification, you can use it for the meeting, gathering, etc. So that's quite useful. And uh, that's how we emulate like personal decisions uh, in the emails and personal decision patterns. And of course, that could be quite useful. But uh, if those patterns are actually somehow erroneous, that's the question. And then we have some kind of artificial idiot that, of course, will uh, produce uh, the new errors instead of for better decisions. So to correct uh, this decision assistance, uh, we have turned to the theory uh, of cognitive biases by Tversky and Kahneman, and that actually helps. So using the main principles of the theory, uh, we know that we don't actually need all the information to make a good decision, uh, but we should cut off uh, all the unnecessary, and then all the noise that we have uh, becomes a signal uh, and then actually we uh, complete the picture uh, by all the information we have already known by that time and that's how the signal becomes history and after that uh, having a history we, we make some uh, conclusion and we make a decision and then the uh, all the process reiterates and so uh, if we apply this model uh, on all the outputs of the NLP models we have processed, uh, somehow that could work better to prevent cognitive biases. So, uh, over all of the NLP models we have, actually, we have constructed some kind of an ensemble of the classifiers, 
which uh, detect is there or there is no some cognitive bias. Uh, the cognitive bias theory provides us a wide list of all the uh, biases we can have. Uh, there are about 300, I suppose, by now. It, it's a really giant list. So we are working with uh, top 20 by now. Uh, and still, this is like uh, the pilot project with uh, the early adopters that we have in uh, our office. So uh, what we have is uh, a model that decides, is there a uh, possibility of bias uh, in the email you're writing? For example, is someone writing uh, a great email with a lot of addresses and with a lot of questions inside? So possibly there is a bias, uh, which is called an escape of, uh, possibility, uh, escape of responsibility. And uh, for example, uh, if you have a discussion in the email and then you reject some of the initiative from a person, but in a short time, uh, you accept another initiative from that person that also is possibly a bias, which is called the foot in the door. So by now, uh, we are testing this system and uh, it's not working like online. It's somehow like a weekly record of how you performed this week. Uh, still, it's good to know, uh, to know more about yourself, about your patterns, about your decision making process. I suppose that's uh, quite useful uh, about your own biases and your own uh, weak points. So that's how we create the digital manager project. And I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Tatiana. And uh, we have uh, the first uh, question uh, from our YouTube audience. Uh, uh, let me read this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Collective based uh, decision making using NLP ML libraries and replacing all the uh, uh, middle <laughs> management. Middle managers. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I see love the it. text. Oh, <laughs> are you hiring Tatiana? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, we are hiring. You can send me your CV uh, on the LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, so that's a question from uh, Jeff Kaplan. I, I'm not yeah. sure uh, he is based uh, uh, in Russia, but uh, who knows? Uh, so uh, there is a uh, slightly more serious question, how do you define and model biases? Yeah, so we have a list of biases, uh, which is like stated and you can find it like uh, uh, on even on the Wikipedia, it's uh, uh, a common thing which is found not only uh, in human decision making, but also like uh, with the shimps and uh, uh, they are like well known and established experimentally, uh, and we have uh, cognitive scientists uh, uh, at Sberbank. There is a lab uh, which is uh, providing that kind of uh, theory, and so we went uh, to the lab and uh, have uh, presented our hypothesis that uh, on the uh, all, on the all of the outputs of our NLP models can we actually state some of these biases and the answer was yes and uh, there are like uh, uh, like 20 by now which are like well defined uh, that could be even a rule-based model actually but so we don't use rules we use like NLP models uh, so I cannot tell like the accuracy we are actually uh, working with because it's uh, a test by now, but uh, uh, that's quite impressive, I should say, yeah. Okay, there are a lot of uh, follow-up questions about uh, biases. So like, uh, what are some of the top biases? I guess, uh, what are the most uh, prominent uh, or important biases, examples? Well, uh, as we are working uh, in a bank, like uh, the escape of responsibility is like the top one, I suppose. So if there is a problem or there is a, uh, a difficult, a complex uh, question, then someone writes to you, but you do not answer, but you write a letter 
on a lot of employees with this question itself and adding some more of information, colleagues, please help. And that's how you escape the real responsibility you were given. Uh, also, there are a lot of biases uh, connected with uh, time, uh, like uh, the information and how much time you needed to answer. And there are biases uh, like uh, the underestimation uh, of time, the underestimation of uh, doing nothing, like something like that. So that, that's kind of problem also. And uh, is it uh, possible to correct the cognitive biases of the leader, uh, who is the one who asks the initial question and starts the uh, decision making process? Well, that's kind of a political question, right? Uh, still, uh, I suppose that uh, our leaders, like, they like to know more about themselves. So uh, if they have a list, and that's a report on how. Uh, uh, you are biased, uh, that's an information for them. And they're interested in that kind of information. Uh, there are like some simple biases, uh, like uh, uh, they are more eager to uh, decide some things about money on Sunday and on Saturday, but not uh, on Friday, for example. So. And uh, how do you train uh, these biases? Uh, so do you have a sort of uh, this uh, uh, team of cognitive psychologists who label uh, uh, some examples from the training set? Yeah, yeah, we have a lab actually, a cognitive lab in the bank, yeah. So uh, you label uh, some examples with a sort of ground truth? Yeah, uh, well, uh, in the project, we also have a chat bot uh, in the Telegram, and there is like uh, uh, a test you can pass uh, and tell about your decision making process. And after you uh, complete the test, then you have some advice about your decision making. And we have also carried out this. Uh, uh, like this test for, for, for the other employees in the office. So uh, after they complete uh, the test, they like ha have to pick one problem which is uh, relevant for them. And then uh, mm, they have some, this piece of decision process uh, expressed in the text, so the, in the text messages that they write to the bot. And then uh, the cognitive scientists and psychologists from the lab, they label these pieces, yeah. And uh, how much? But that's is... kind of uh, anonymous. Uh, yeah. And how large is the training set? Well, I suppose by now it's about like uh, six thousand messages. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, not, much, not much, but if you work with pre-trained yeah. models, maybe that would be better. And uh, could you share the most exciting example of a decision uh, made by your system? Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, like there was a discussion, like uh, an internal demo uh, of the current results. Uh, and then uh, there was an email uh, with uh, the leaders and they discussed how much they should spend uh, uh, on the, uh, some ML competition. Uh, as a prize. Uh, and there were three alternatives and the system uh, has rearranged the alternatives so that uh, uh, the less, the best. The less, uh, the less amount was the best. Uh, but the final decision that was made historically was different. And we show that on the slide, uh, and the leaders themselves uh, who were sitting uh, uh, and seeing the presentation, uh, they have uh, like, uh, uh, I, I don't know, they, they have seen this uh, slide and they have said like, 
oh, that's that's how we decided it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's correct. I remember. And, and and the fact is that that was like in another bias because uh, their decision was uh, different <laughs> in the history. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nice. Uh, another interesting uh, question uh, from uh, our audience and actually uh, you may uh, know Grigory Sapunov. Uh, so uh, actually uh, you are trying to combat uh, cognitive biases, but uh, machine uh, learning methods uh, introduce uh, their own biases. So uh, how are you going to avoid this? Well, of course, there are some some of the biases we are like voting with. Uh, like, uh, I don't know, there is like corporate culture, you know, which is uh, somehow of a bias itself. Uh, but maybe some of the biases are, are not that bad, actually. We have... Uh, like uh, some of the employees, uh, our colleagues, which are like early adopters, they have some kind of the biases that uh, they don't take into consideration all the documents they have, but make a quick conclusion. Uh, Tatiana, sorry, you, it seems you have troubles with internet connection. We cannot hear you. Oh, hello. Do you hear me? Uh, yes, but uh, not perfectly. Uh, so, okay, there are many other questions. Let's uh, try uh, another one uh, connected uh, question uh, instead of returning to the previous one. Uh, so what do you think about uh, interpretability, interpretability of your models? Because uh, if uh, you are not sure uh, why uh, these models take uh, these decisions, uh, make these decisions and so on, uh, how can you rely on them? So what do you think about interpretability? Yeah, uh, th that's kind of a good question because, uh, you know, uh, if the accuracy of the model is 99%, no one asks uh, that kind of questions. But if it's like 75, then there are questions why it's not working. And uh, that's a tricky, tricky question. Like, uh, mm, for our model of uh, choice of plausible alternatives, uh, we had that kind of uh, investigation. So as we are working with universal transformers, which are pertained, uh, we use uh, attention uh, to see uh, what is actually important in that uh, or those cases uh, when the model uh, is uh, giving us some output. So. That's uh, not just a black box, but maybe like a gray box for us. Uh, but still the limitations are quite uh, strong because uh, uh, for example, if we train our model on uh, project management uh, thematics or on some coding questions, then uh, the similar questions are uh, Like oh, they're processed uh, in a good way, and we see like uh, the weights of the model that uh, 
the probabilities of the answer of the correct answer are high and if we change the thematics or we will need some uh, some more of a high level uh, conclusion made on the data then uh, the probabilities of the correct and incorrect answers are very similar so that's what happened when we have tested on our employees and then check the model of the leaders are not at all solved by a model which is working well with simple technical questions and some more simple decisions yeah okay thank you maybe i can ask the last question uh, so it's uh, very nice to see that uh, such uh, pragmatic organizations like banks uh, uh, got interested in uh, AGI and uh, you mentioned uh, AGI for uh, many times in your presentation uh, which uh, was uh, uh, very motivating uh, but uh, uh, well I I'm not sure what uh, do you think uh, uh, what part of uh, your system uh, or is a, a complete design or what corresponds to AGI because uh, transformers uh, are cool but uh, it's uh, DNN, NLP uh, which is nice but uh, which is sort of uh, not considered as AGI per se. So do you have some uh, ideas how to develop it further or didn't you share some uh, know hows about how uh, it is incorporated in uh, your AGI system. So, what do, uh, do you think on it? Yeah. <clears throat> so we are building like the AGI system itself uh, uh, to help the leaders, to help the managers. But of course, uh, what we do have now is not at all like can be 100% be called AGI because we are going from the lower levels to a more high levels. And uh, the next steps of uh, developing our system is uh, incorporating the knowledge graphs. So we have a knowledge graph uh, basis uh, within uh, all the projects we have. Uh, and that would be like the next, next high level thing that is not completely like NLP. So that would be like uh, graph based models incorporated, but also uh, at some extent we'll have uh, to incorporate some uh, logical things, which is like the most uh, complex thing to do. Uh, I don't think like the NLP is completely enough to solve this, this kind of problem, of course, but this is what we can do right now and uh, see the limits of, of the method actually. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, giving this uh, talk and uh, this uh, session.